feet together. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We feel your presence with us always, Lord Jesus. You've reminded us that we're never alone. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed us today. Might we be instruments of worship. Use this service, Lord Jesus, to touch hearts and to touch lives. We pray for the anointing of your Spirit upon our pastor as he preaches the Word of God to us. And God, might we hear what you have for us. And bless us today, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Pastor. Lift your hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't the Lord wonderful today? Ain't He wonderful today? Such beautiful music. Sing. In Hollywood thinks they got good music. Hollywood just got a bunch of junk. You're listening to good music. The book of Mark, chapter 4, for our text today. We have, we're going to have a water baptizing here in just a few minutes, the Lord willing. And uh, I rejoice anytime somebody takes on the name of Jesus. I like what Paul said. He said some preach Christ for envy and some with jealousy and strife. Uh, that is to bring problems on me, he said. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. Whatever the reason Christ is preached, I will that Christ is being preached. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Because there's none other name. I'm going to bear this young man and God will resurrect it. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Sherry, thank you for that song. I got reason I'm saying that. I'm glad for both songs, but I got reason for your song. And the same day, when it was evening, when evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, there were also with him other little children. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. That's not good business to have a full ship of water. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they wake him and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly said one to another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. That's awesome. Just a few minutes, I want to preach. Sister Pooh, good to see you and your family. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank everyone for being here today. Just a few minutes, if you'll help me, Jesus is walking in your storm. Give me a song, I'll show you uh, just a little bit before. Lay your Bible down and lift your hands to it right now. Jesus, Father, we love you today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just feel your mighty power here today, Lord, and your grace. We thank you today. God, for what we already have failed you. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. For your blessing upon each one today. Hallelujah. I feel your presence today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you today. You may be seated. Jesus is walking in your storm. You can, you can search through this congregation this morning and talk with different ones and probably talk with everyone. And uh, you'd find different storms in people's lives, different things. 
happening in, in people's lives and things uh, that bother that are happening in your life doesn't doesn't happen necessarily in my life. I mean, lots of storms that rages throughout uh, 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 people's lives. And the point I want to point out, the thing I want to point out to you this morning for a few minutes is that we know that Jesus sent them into that storm. You got to understand that he he had to know that storm was there. He's the storm maker. And he created all things. And so he sent them. If you read Matthew's gospel, it says it kind of like this. He told them to go before him and said, then I'm coming also. And so Jesus knew all about the storm. Just like he knows all about the storms of our life today. Because Isaiah says that in his writing in 55 and 8, for thou, for my thoughts are not thou, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So we, we know that Jesus knew all about the storm, and we know that Jesus knows all about the storms in our life, and sometimes we can't comprehend why God allows us to go through certain storms. And, and I can't. You know, I, I, like that deal she was talking about that insurance. Boy, I'm telling you, I'd read, I'd read the fire. You know, I thought, no, you're not, you're not going to do that. No, sir, that ain't going to get it. Well, it got it. You know, they won without a, without a shot being fired. The insurance company won. Uh, so the storm sometimes comes in our life that, and that we don't understand why, but the prophet Isaiah said that God's thoughts and our thoughts are totally different. Right. We don't even think like God does. We, we don't even act like God does. And Acts turns around in the, in the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, Verse 6 said, In God spake on this wise, that thy seed shall sojourn in a strange land, and that they should uh, bring them into bondage and entreat them evil, evil 400 years. And verse number 7 said, And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage uh, will I judge, saith God, and after they shall come forth and serve me in this place. Do you reckon Israel understood the fact that God had carried them and sent them to bondage. It was God's will for, for, for them to be there according to the book of Acts and, and other chapters as well in the Old Testament. How that God knew all about Egypt and He knew all about the bondage. He knew everything that was going on in their lives see, because see, God was already in that situation before they got there. God was already walking in their storm in, in, in their bondage, God was already there, and the, God, and the blessings of God was already there. He's already walking with them in that storm. And that's one thing about God is that God is already ahead of us. And, and God, we're, we're, we're behind God. We're not in front. If we get in front of God, we got a real problem. And, and God's always up there in, in, in my future. God already knows my tomorrow. You know, I can stand here and say, well, tomorrow I'm going to do this or tomorrow I'm going to do that and I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know, I know God knows what's in, in my life tomorrow. God's already, there's going to be a storm raging and, and somebody's going to be walking through a valley and walking through a storm and, and fighting the situations and, and, and God already knows about that and He's already walking in that storm. I enjoyed the Sunday school lesson, Sister Creasy. Great Sunday school lesson teaching us about the valley and the victory that was in that valley. Amen. This setting that I read to you, if you'll pay close attention to me just for a few minutes, I won't keep you all day, just all morning. <laughs> pay close attention to this setting where Je is right where Jesus, matter of fact, was right after Jesus was teaching a parable about a mustard seed of faith. If you'll, under, if you'll remember, he's teaching about a mustard seed. And uh, I believe Jesus, in his teaching, was telling them and us, in particular of that day, them, telling them that just a little faith and God can do great things. Yes. Right. He's teaching about a grain of mustard seed. He's teaching them that you got just a little bit of faith. Yes. You can say to the mountain. Move, move. Now, you, you, you kind of just believe what you want to believe and, and, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get along. 
but I, I don't think Jesus had it referenced of, of a literal mountain. I don't think he was referring to a big, large hill as, as, as that we would call. In other words, I don't think he was telling me to go move Old Spokey. Right. Old Spokey's been there a long time. I think he was telling us that the mountains in our life, the problems that's in our life that we fight every day, those are mountains that we can't seem to cross over. Uh, now, if you believe it was a literal mountain, that's okay. I don't have a problem with you believing that. Just, you know, but I, I think he's talking about what I go through every day. I think he's talking about the mountains and the things in my life. If I got the faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can say to that mountain, move and it shall be moved. I think this is what Christ was trying to teach about these great things, about, about how God could do great things if we just have a little bit of faith. If we just believe him a little bit, somebody look at your neighbor and say, just a little bit, neighbor. It don't take a whole lot. And so this is what I'm talking about. And they were right here. And, and I thought this was very noteworthy. Uh, these few little statements I'm fixing to make. I, I thought it was it was so fitting to bring this out that you know, because some of you don't hardly read your Bible, no way. And I think you need to understand this was right at the Sea of Galilee where Jesus walked on the water. So Jesus was familiar with miracles in this particular area. So it was right where Christ walked on the water. It was the same place where the, about where the miracles of fish was. For remember he told Peter it was and said, uh, have you got any fish? Yeah. Have you caught anything? He said, not a bite. Come on, come on. Had even been used the same cricket all night. <laughs> Had caught a thing. Yes. Jesus said, I take not only did he, did he tell him to go fishing, uh -huh. you ready? He told him where to fish. Right. He said, put your net uh -huh. on the right side. Yes. Now I don't know if he meant right hand or the right side, you dummy. <laughs> I don't know what, but what it, they got it, whatever it was, and but right they threw their nets out, and you know that story, they caught so much fish that the nets break and the boat began to sink and they had to call the little boats over to help them catch all the fish and bang them all up and get them all ready and get them to the bank. What a miracle. Do you see what I'm talking about? Listen carefully. Don't miss me now. Because I know I cut up a lot and you'll miss me. He's talking about a, 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 the parable of the grain of mustard seed. He's talking about faith as a grain of mustard seed. Then he turns right around now, the next verse, and he says, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Yeah. Knowing Jesus, like I know him, he already knew the, the, uh, the storm's coming, Brother Mark. Preach this sometimes when you go somewhere. He already knew the storm's coming. The part the deal of teaching was he was preparing them for the storm. He's getting them ready to have faith to overcome that storm. He's preparing them by the teaching of the of the of the mustard seed that there's a storm coming. He didn't tell them that, but he could have. There's a storm coming, and you're going to need some faith when you get out there on that sea of Galilee. You're going to have to have some faith because there's a storm coming. Jesus is getting us ready today. God's preparing His church, His bride, to get ready. There's a storm coming. Amen. You can mark it down when you leave here today. There's a storm coming. You can mark it down when you get up in the morning to go do your daily work or whatever it is you do. There's a storm coming. Right, there's a black cloud rising up out there somewhere. I'm talking about a spiritual cloud. The enemy is not going to let you sit comfortable. He's going to do everything he can to bring you down. He's going to do everything he can to stop you. But Jesus said if you got faith like a mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to get out of your way. Praise the Lord. I believe, I believe with all my heart that Jesus was preparing them for the storm. And I believe when we come to the house of God that Jesus prepares us, gets us ready. But teaching like we heard today, 
preaching like Brother Mark does and others. All oh, that just prepares us for that storm that's coming in our life. That situation that we don't quite know how to deal with. That problem that we don't know how to handle. That situation that I don't know which way I'm going. God has took it, taken the word of God that this man teaches and that this lady teaches and builds my faith and gets me built up, prepared me to get in that boat and head to the other side. But there's a storm raging and I'm going to have some faith. Thank you, Jesus. And remember, at uh, Mark 4, 36 said, and when they had sent away, or when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship and they were also with him other little ships. I believe that this is telling us that Jesus was with them all the time. They never got out of his reach. We never get out of the reach of God. We understand. We need to understand that no matter what you go through in life, no matter what problem, or right, you need to hear me now, Hey, I, I'm in the book and I'm anointed. No matter what goes through you, do what you go through in your life, God is telling us through this little simple parable because many of us are unlearned and ignorant. We don't understand it. It has to come be broken down. I'm the same way. You can't tell me real deep things, man. I, it's, I, I hear preachers preach and I think they done dug a hole and fell in it. <laughs> There's some deep. Just tell me the simple things. Tell me about the mustard seed of faith. Tell me all I got to have is just a little bit of faith that will grow like a mustard seed if I will allow. That's what I need. I don't need to know who the man of sin is. Jesus will take care of that pecker wood when he gets here. I don't need to know who all these big kings are. It ain't nothing to me. I don't need to know. You know what I need to know? I need to know where to find Jesus Christ. I need to know how to get water baptized. Oh, somebody ought to help me a minute. Just give me just a minute. I don't need to know a lot of deep things. I need to know if I exercise my faith, God will come over the scene. That's what I need. Preacher, tell me. Preacher, you just tell me what I got to do to be saved. Dead man, I can't get you ready for the mark of the beast if we're here, if the church is here. I can't get you, when I can't even get you saved, I can't get you in an altar, I can't get you prayed through. I'm going to teach you simple stuff like a grain of mustard seed. And Jesus talked that and said, let us get in the boat. And I think in the back of his mind, he said, I'm going to see if you really learned that lesson. And guess what? They did. They were playing. They were, they were playing golf. Did I say it? Golf or guff? <laughs> Jeff Arnold was preaching general conference. Man. About 30,000. He preaches long. I mean long. Hard, long, and good. Like a whale. I told him one day, one day standing outside, my whales are gorilla whales. They're big, strong, and ugly. <laughs> Jeff Arnold was preaching People start getting up and leaving because it's time to go home. It's time to go eat. So, well, my preacher, she got no sense. He said, I'll tell you what you guys do. He said, you just get on up and get on out here and go play your game of God. Come on. Go do whatever it is you're going to do this afternoon. And said, Patty Arnold's going to be sitting right there. That's his wife. He said, I'm going to finish this sermon. <laughs> just give me faith. Hey. Brother, just teach me how to make it. Teach me how. Teach me about that grain of mustard seed. What was it? I'd like to hit on something you had, Sister Creasy, going on that, that, that rabbit she was running. Let me chase him a little. David said, what did you say was going to be given to... Now, you don't have your time. It's going to be, now you can be old. It's going to be given to the man that bumped this big guy off. Well, the king's going to make him rich. He's not going to have to pay taxes. Right, and that right. third one done the trick. Yeah. He just married the princess. Yeah. David said, I think it's worth it. <laughs> Give him a slam shot. Right. Go and try and hunt. Yeah. Just tell me. Yes. 
Just tell me, preacher. Feel my faith, preacher. Feel my faith. Tell me how to make it. We got to understand he's right here with us all the time. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Now look at what happened. Verse 37. Joseph. Is it? Yeah, Joseph. There arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. The storm maybe was kind of had the force of like of a hurricane. And I could almost hear, Brother Mark, somebody was screaming, you about somebody needs to sound an alarm. Somebody needs to send an email to the Coast Guard. We're going to have to have some help. We're going to send you. We're going to have to have some help. We have a problem. The boat's full. The wind's beating against it. Imagine now. Just imagine. Put yourself in that boat. Put yourself right out there on that sea of Galilee. And put yourself in that boat. And where the waves are beating against the boat. To the point that you thought it was going to turn over. Put yourself there. Sure enough. Put yourself right there. The winds were so strong. Uh, Brother Mark, that the waves were so high and the wind so strong that the boat was filled with water and was about to sink. Put yourself there. Now watch what they did in verse 38. We're about to get to where I want to go. And he was in the hinder part. Now I looked at some ships in that day. Well, actually they were pictures of these ships. And some of those ships were, were made, you know, I didn't say how long, but in the hinder part of those boats was a like a little makeshift shed where you could go in out of the rain or the weather. And it was a step down. You, are you listening? A step down. That's why the Bible said they were, went down into the ship. It was a step down. Jesus is in the first part of that boat that collects water. He's down. Are you understanding? He's in the low spot. They ain't got enough sense to know he got the water first. He already knows that boat's getting filled with water. And sound asleep. On a pillow. Maybe it's blocked up out of the water. But here it is. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they waked him and said unto him, Master, don't you care that we perish? He, don't, he already knew. I just, I just put myself out there on the limb. He already knew that boat was filling with water because he's in the hinder part. Right. He's where the water came first. Oh, God. Let us ask ourselves, how long? Let me ask you this. They cried out. Let me go back there. Put that first back. It's still up there. He, they cried out and said, he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and said, Lord, Master, son of the Master, cares thou not that we perish? They finally got it together and began to cry out to God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you, how long has it been since you cried out for God to save you? How long has it been since you were so desperate? Somebody said you done some pounding with your prayer. You know what? You know what? Many of us, myself included, we wait till a crisis come before we ever cry. We ought to be crying out every day. God save America. God save our president. Lord save our churches. Save our children. 
save our save our our our, our lives, Lord. Every day we ought to be crying out, Lord, save us. It looked like to be that Jesus uh, that that boat was going to sink. It, it was taking on water, and but Jesus is asleep, and they were so scared, and they knew Jesus is sleeping on that lower level uh, below, and they were scared to death because of that storm. And they were so scared, their emotions run crazy. You know how you do? You know how you do? You just get so You just know something's going to get you. Well, I used to, when I was a kid, I was told, Frank, we had, we had a, lived in this old house that, that about half the brick side was gone off of it. You could hear the wind whispering through the corners and the cracks and, and feel the road pop up and down when that north wind was blowing. Some of you don't know Stanley knows. He, he, I've heard him talk about Roger, I guess. Uh, but some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. But you know what? And, 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 and we, it, it makes you quit drinking a lot of iced tea at night because you've got two bedrooms and a pad. And so the bathroom is behind the second or third tree on your left. Don't go to the one on the right. That's the ladies. I'm not telling the truth. I'd go out to that barn after dark. I'd try to beg some of them other boys to gossip. I was the baby boy. No, no, we're done. I'd go out there, man, and listen. I'd start back to the house. I'd make it pretty good out there. And I'd head back. The farther out there, the closer I got to the house, the faster I walked. Uh, and, and because, yeah, because I could just feel something scratching my back just trying to get hold of it. That's why they, they, these disciples were so afraid. So they, they knew he was in the boat. They knew he was in the boat. Why were they so He even asked himself, why were you so afraid? Why? And, and, I, and it, it got so they got so emotional that they even said, Lord, don't you care? Yeah. Right. Come on. Ain't that ignorant? Yeah. For a child of God to ask God, don't you care? Yeah. When all the sermons we've heard about the love and the mercy and the grace of God, and we do not get scared and say, God, don't you care that my bills ain't paid? We are not trying to God in line. Don't you care? Of course he cares. So he arose, verse 39, and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And there was a great sea. And, there was a, and, and the wind ceased and there was a, a great calm. There was a great calm. Jesus, Brother Stan, you always, when I, anytime I'm reading about this, I always think that the uh, movie you said you saw over there at the place over there with the Shorter Christian movie, whatever that was. And it, I think it was a, actually a play, wasn't it? And someone was playing Christ and, and uh, he steps out on the on that boat and, and says, Peace be still. You know what a great calm is? That means you don't even see one little trickle. It's a great calm. You can just skip the rock a half a mile. God. He only spoke three words. Peace. Be still. I love it when the Master speaks. Now I'm going to close you just about another 30 minutes or so. <laughs> Jesus, you got to understand. He has all power. He has all authority. He has all ability to change your nature. He spoke to nature that night. He did. He spoke to the storms, the lightning, the wind, peace. I tell you why the wind and the lightning and the rain and everything stopped. The Creator spoke to him. Be still. And he said, why, verse 40, are you so fearful? How is it that you have no... He was talking about. But Mark, he was asking. He, he, he could have said, you knew I was in this boat. You, I, you, you knew I wasn't going to let this boat sink. Why were you so good? I know. I know what God's done with this old man. 
And yet, I still get afraid. Because I'm hard-headed too. And I, that lesson about that grain of mustard seed, sometimes I scratch my old ball spot. I try to do better. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, watch this, I love it, verse 41. What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Ooh. They could hardly believe their eyes. That's the truth. Such a, they could hardly believe their eyes. I wonder if God done a miracle like that right here. Would we believe it? Would we believe our eyes? Would we say, what all and all and all through the scripture we find that and then I believe we would. I, I believe we would. I didn't mean that for a rebuke. Don't take it that way. The story that I'm preaching or that I read to you is twofold. This is a twofold story. Here's the, here we go, right here, and, I, and I'll let you go home just in a minute. The people in that boat represent us. We are the people in that boat. It's twofold. The storm that Jesus allowed and sent to those disciples that night represent a sin nature and our sins and our enemy that tried to take us out. We're in the boat. The enemy's out on the water today. Listen carefully to me. Jesus, by calming that storm, by speaking that word, peace be still, is showing me he has all power over my enemy. Yeah, right. yes. In one gospel, yes. in another setting, Jesus literally walked on the storm yes. that they were fighting. Yes. He got so far out, I don't know how close he was, Brother Willingham, uh, but Maybe through the lightning, as the lightning was flashing, you know how you can see things. And, and he saw he picked, Peter picked up on something out there, and another disciple picked it up, and, and they began to look. And, and somebody might have said, "What is that out there on that water?" And, and, and Peter said, "I believe that's the Lord. I believe that's the Lord out there." Well, I'm probably so sure that not. He got more sense than that. Surely. And, and Peter said, I'll find out. Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out there. I ain't real sure Peter expected to hear the voice say, come on. I believe he had a rather hurt voice say, it ain't me. The Lord said, come on. Peter walked out there, long story short, began to, took his eyes off the Lord, began to say, Jesus helped it and walked back to the boat and he said, how come you doubt it? How come do we doubt? Now I'm going to ask, I'm officially getting ready to close. Showed up this time. What area in our life do we need peace? Jesus calmed the enemy and made him shut up now, what area in our life do we need peace? Where is it that we need God to touch our life? Is it our job? Do we need peace on our job? Do we need peace with our children? With our hard-headed teenagers? Or whatever? Or maybe it's a spouse that we're having trouble with. Husband or wife, whichever the case. Or maybe it's good. Maybe we need peace with that. Or maybe it's a family member. Or maybe it's just a friend that we need peace with. Or maybe it's just God that we need to need peace with God. <laughs> maybe everything's okay on, on your job. Maybe your family's all okay. Maybe everything's fine. Maybe, maybe your spouse is, is a lo lot more spiritual than you are. Maybe he or she prays a lot more. Maybe they come to the altar a lot more and pray when we, when we have everybody come. Maybe you don't even bother coming at all. I'm not saying you're backslid because of this, but listen, maybe all that. But, but maybe, just maybe, that peace you need with Jesus yourself. My problem is not her. 
That's the prettiest woman I've ever been married to. It's not her. Here's the problem. Brother Jeff, the old boy I shave every morning, he's the old boy I have problems with. He's the one. Sister Sherry, I want you to come back up here if you would. Is Rebecca still out there? Is she here? Where's she? Are they next door? Okay, so if you come on in. I, I don't hear that piece. Uh, make her piece uh, again. But uh, I'm j just a just a, a little touch here, and I'm fixing to go. She can just kind of strum that piano just a little bit. And, but if you wanted to uh, jot it down, you could go to the ninth chapter of Matthew. And he tells a beautiful story, Brother Mark. He tells about a woman with an issue of blood. But you know that Jesus was already in that situation? He already knew that woman was coming. Remember the story? She said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. And, and when she touched his garment, he turned and said, who touched me? And somebody said, well, Lord, the blood's too strong in you. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, it doesn't need to touch. I'm, I'm talking about somebody touched me. He was already there. And if you want to go to John chapter 5, five you can read about a man at the pool of Bethesda there in Jerusalem. He was in, had five porches. You can read that story. And Jesus walked up behind him. He was laying there. And at a certain time of the year or a certain time of season, an angel would come down from heaven into that pool and would trouble the water. And whoever got into that water at the troubling of the water was made whole. Am I right, Brother Mark? Okay. He's laying there. He said, open oh, his feet. He can't walk. Been there 38 years. I believe I'm right. 38 years. That's a long time. I've been here 37 going up there. Uh, so Jesus comes up behind him and just I, 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 think, I want to think he just kind of laid his hand on him and said wilt thou be made whole and he didn't know who Jesus was he said Lord he said how, how was it he said I, I can't get into the water he said every time that angel troubles the water someone beats me into the water he's crippled Jesus said arise take up your dead water let me tell you please I'm going to close Jesus was already walking in his situation. He already knew all about it. I come to tell somebody here today, Jesus is walking in your stomach. He already knows. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you need peace with, peace with. Got a situation in my life. I can't find peace. The peacemaker is here today got a problem I can't feel peace with it been hurt been disappointed let down have no peace with it the peacemaker is waiting for you to come as you stand as you stand I want you right now if there's something that you feel you need peace with I want you to come stand or kneel around the front of these altars and find peace today Jesus is already walking in your stone. He already knows where you're at. This is beautiful. Bring it to Jesus.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Beautiful sermon this morning. Beautiful Sunday school lesson. Great praise, great worship. So thankful that we have the freedom to assemble, to come anytime we choose to come, and to worship the Lord of heaven. We teach the Bible plan of salvation here. We believe that expressed in Acts chapter 2. And Acts chapter 2 and 38 says that if you repent of your sins, that means die to yourself. And then you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. Then you're buried. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you look in the book of Acts, you will see constantly that the apostles went out and they water baptized following the command of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had prepared them beforehand. And they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because as Sister Creasy quoted this morning, Acts 4 and 12 says, There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby you are saved. It's the name of Jesus. Now it's important that the name of Jesus be invoked because it's in His authority that we do all that we do. And Sister Creasy also quoted that whatever we do, we do it all in the name of Jesus. We say that and believe that because the Bible teaches that. Because the Bible says that that's what we should do. And as ministers, we have to preach what the Bible preach and teach what the Bible teaches. Now the gospel simply is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the beautiful expression of New Testament salvation is that we imitate that same experience as a believer. We die to our old self when we repent. We're water baptized and we are buried with Christ. We take on the name of Christ in water baptism. And then we face that supernatural expression, the resurrection experience, the newness of life through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so it's very important that we understand that when we water baptize, this is a very, very special experience. For thousands of years, men and women have submitted to water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And as they were doing in the day of the apostles, baptizing in the beautiful name of Jesus and His authority, we're going to do the exact same thing here today. And so praise the Lord. We are so thankful for the opportunity to have this water baptism today. Pray with us. Pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this soul that's come today, Lord, that you take on your name and your nature. God, I pray you'll be on the edge of baptism. He is saved in his Thank you, Jesus. Tonight we're having our uh, Christmas program. It begins at 5.30, so we hope you'll all come. Hope you'll bring a guest with you. Uh, we're going to eat afterwards, so please come and enjoy the program and stay around and let's have our banquet together. Um, any other announcements today? Anything else that needs to be announced this morning? Okay. All right, before I take prayer requests, I'd just like to remind us that every time water baptism takes place in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible compares that new believer to a child, to a little baby. And so we have to model and show them an example. Teach them how to talk. Teach them how to walk. Teach them the ways and the standards that the Holy Spirit has been so good to us and has revealed to us. We need to pray for them. 
uplift them, encourage them to realize that just as when we first experienced that great joy, when he goes out into the world, he's going to be hit with everything that can hit him. And so we must surround him with prayer so that he may know that we love him, but most importantly, that Jesus Christ has really made a change in his life. Because that devil's going to tell him, you ain't got anything. He hadn't done anything for you. Don't you remember what you did a couple of weeks prior to that? Don't you remember that old life you used to live and you think that preacher's done something for you? But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is going to be in that boy's life for the rest of his life. And I don't know what may happen. He may go the opposite direction, but he'll always have that tugging and he'll always have that pulling and he'll always remember this experience because I believe this to be a supernatural expression of God's love to say that though the world has said you'd never be nothing potentially or the world has said you've done too much, the world has said you've gone too far. I said I loved you and you're worth it and I'm willing to do this for you. And so that's exactly what the Lord done for me and I know the Lord is doing the same for that young man. So let's clap our hands to the Lord. Always a beautiful experience to see water baptism in the name of Jesus. So just remember, keep him in your prayers. Any prayer request, any prayer request today that we'd like to, to mention this morning? My children. Your children, okay, sure. Sister Wanda. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law are leaving in the morning driving up to Alabama. Okay. We pray for their travels, yes ma'am. Brother Zavala. Uh, Tim, Tim Bell, okay. Also my wife, Crystal, she's home, she's recovering, she's doing well, but just please keep her in your prayers. Um, any other prayer needs? Uh, sister? Sure. Well, we'll lift all these needs up, and then after we do that, I'd like you to come down, and we'll anoint you with oil, and we'll pray with you, especially. Okay. All right. Any other needs, sister? Mark, they said I said my daughter and son-in-law. Ray said it's my daughter and grandson. A daughter and grandson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows who you mean. Amy, okay. All right, why don't we just lift our hands together and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, we are so thankful today. We've heard the Word of God preached. We've had the opportunity to watch the New Testament baptismal experience here today. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will play, pray for each and every one of these needs. Not only today, but every time we bow our knees to pray, might we remember our church family, for they're so valuable and important to us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of these needs that have been mentioned. Needs of healing that have been mentioned. Needs of traveling that have been... Just keep your hand upon them, Lord Jesus. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for deliverance in that name. We pray, Heavenly Father, for provision in that name. We pray, God, that you will encourage in that name here today. Help us see the world as you see the world. And to approach life as you approach life. Might we see that the power of God rests inside each and every one of us. And might we go out into this community and might we change it in the name of Jesus. We pray for all these needs, both spoken and unspoken. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for it's in your name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. You're dismissed.